Metallica's Injustice for All. And I apologize for putting this in the bucket because you guys already reviewed it. That's okay. But I have a story. All right. Well, hang on. Let me get the background of the album, then we'll go with your story. Or actually, go with your story first. Yeah, go with the story first. So I'm, what, this came out in 88. Yeah, well, if you would let me do the fucking I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm I'm age-wise here, age-wise, age-wise here. I'm, I'm at, I'm at, I'm, I'm 14 years old at hunting camp, and. What the fuck is hunting camp? It's deer camp. Yeah, hunting season. Wait a minute, so they just get a bunch of children together, give them firearms, and go do it? No, you fucking nut. Well, I, went, I went with my dad. Up in Skook adjacent, yeah. Oh, so it wasn't like a summer camp. This was up at the cabin. Oh, so... During was, hunting season. Wait, so was A it, bunch of grown-ass men, and my dad brought me along my first year of hunting camp. Or was it my second? I don't remember. But anyway... Anyway... Don't. One of the, <laughs> one, one of the members up there um, brought his stepson up. And I remember sitting at the table. What the fuck is so funny? I have no idea. <laughs> what are you what are you folks thinking here? I wasn't thinking anything. Actually, I was thinking of the Uper song, but <laughs> Go. the second we can decamp. He's the buckless Uper that can't shoot a buck. And he's the fucking jibber. <laughs> you thought you'd sleep you thought you'd sneak that fucking reference past yeah. me, didn't you? The fucking jibber. Anyway, okay. It's the second week of deer camp. Sorry! <laughs> no, it wasn't the second week. I only went up there for a couple days because I had school, you dick. Sorry. But anyway. And he's the buckless youper that can't shoot a buck. Anyway. I think I was listening to Def Leppard around the time. Poison. Shit like that. And uh, the kid the kid was around my age. And I said, what the hell are you listening to? And he had and Justice for All cassette and Megadeth uh, Peace Cells. I've never heard those albums before in my life. That was the first time I heard Metallica, and it was in Justice for All. Mm. That was, uh, yeah, November. But, yeah, that was the first time. And within a month or two, I had the whole back catalog of fucking Megadeth, <laughs> the whole back catalog of fucking Metallica. I was just, that, I, it, that's what hooked me. Mm. And that's why I chose this album. Mm, okay, well, thanks for the fucking useless history lesson. Um, <sighs> what? Well, I guess you're turning the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> this is Metallica's fourth studio album. It was released September 7th, 1988. This is the first full-length release with Jason Newstead on bass. Correct. This album is certified eight times platinum in the United States. In excess of 8 million units sold. Dear Lord. Um, it peaked at number six on the Billboard charts. And Guitar World lists this as number 12 on the 100 greatest guitar albums of all time. Wow. Fitting. Oh, yeah. Um, this lost the Grammy in 1998 to Jethro Tull's Crest of a Knave. <laughs> However... The RIAA realized they fucked up, and they gave him a Grammy in 1990 for one. Oh, did they? Yes. For best metal performance. Yes. And 1990 is also the year that they separated hard rock and heavy metal in the categories. Nice. Because. Yeah, yeah. 89, it was best hard rock slash heavy metal. And that's when Jethro Tull won for Crest of a Knave. Huh. Yeah, my first foray in this album was actually in that smoky dome at Dorney Park. Yes. Uh, they used they used to have an arcade arcade at Dorney Park. And don't make fun of Donald. Yeah, but it had I know it had the Simpsons machine in it. Yes. But you went in there and there was one or two machines. I don't remember there was more. There might have been a few more in there. But also every every teenager would go in there to smoke. Okay. So it was like a thick haze in there. And they oh had a, a big TV on the wall 
that just showed metal videos. Uh huh. And I remember sitting in there, sitting on the floor, and just watching one. And holy shit, it blew me away. Even though he, you had probably introduced him to Metallica by that point. Yeah. Maybe. I know a lot of stuff was happening around the same time. Yeah. And I was completely blown away by that by that video. And even how how slow the video is yeah. and how intense Lars how, is. It's visceral. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember. Let, let, let's save the discussion on one until we get there. Yeah. All right. Song opens up with a track called Blackened. Mm-hmm. This, uh, full disclosure, every song on this album is a yes from me. And I will say as well, and do you remember how I said uh, last week about arguing with my parents about this album? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my mom thought it was Kill Your Mother, <laughs> not oh, Mother die- Earth. Oh, Death of Mother Earth. Yeah, it was. It wasn't. She didn't yeah. hear the Earth part. Well, <laughs> parents just don't understand. This it, is so. gonna, yeah. This is gonna be. A, I mean, for the most part, yeses are. The, but it's a great. Just love this. Yeah. So I a mean, blackened. Great yeah. song. Yeah. Uh, brilliant commentary about what we're doing to the planet, and also it talks about nuclear war. Yes, mm-hmm. it does. Yeah. So uh, this this is Metallica got very. Um, I, I don't want to say political, but very social minded. Yeah, it wasn't the, so on much, this album. It wasn't so much politics as it was what Megadeth was doing. Yeah, Nuclear Assault was doing it. Yeah, a lot of bands. You just would turn on the news and write about what you saw in the news. Right. Yeah, fantastic song. Great way to open the record. Mm-hmm. Um, especially that little backwards intro, because yeah. they 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 recorded it and played it backwards. Oh, really? Yes. Next is the title track, And Justice for All. Mm -hmm. This song speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Justice is for sale. Yep. Always has been, always will be. Yep. Their money tips their scales again. Make your deal. This money's truth I cannot tell, cannot feel. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Great, great song. Great cover for this album. Yes. I mean, that's what I said. Metallica, those first couple were great covers. Yeah. You know? And this is just no. I mean, it was on every T-shirt. Everybody had to. You, everybody knew someone with the T-shirt. Every, everybody knew. Everybody had somebody with Doris. With Doris. Oh yeah. Hmm. Uh, wonderful song. Um, I got nothing. Nothing bad to say about "Injustice yep. for All." Such a fantastic song. Uh, next is "I Have the Beholder." Yes. Yep. Yes. Great absolutely. Song. Absolutely. Um. You're, this this song is about uh, your freedoms are nothing more than a fucking illusion. Correct. F- uh, freedom of uh, freedom of speech is words that they will bend. And freedom of of uh, choices made for you, my friend. Correct. Freedom no longer frees you. Uh, it, it's it's just this whole album is just fucking rife with and, social and, commentary, and it spoke to our generation at that time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. Um, oh, yeah. It's a such a such a brilliant, brilliant. This is James. Like this is James at the height of his of his lyrical master. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. You know, from from a lyric writing standpoint, this is like James didn't never did any better than this. Mm-hmm. You know, because uh, first off, James was still angry. Yes. Second off, he had reasons to be angry. Mm-hmm. And they were still dealing with the with Cliff's, Cliff's, Cliff's death, death yeah. at yeah. this point. Yes. So this album, this album is very angry. Next is the song that introduced a whole mm. group of people to Metallica because it was their first their video, first official video. Yep. Yes. One. And I can remember, as I said, you know, hey, only a, a month because this dropped in January, I think September. No, no, the, the the single. The single one dropped in January of 89. I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But um, I remember like being excited, like, holy fuck, I'm going to, there's going to be, I'm going to see Metallica, Metallica. I remember watching the, the premiere on MTV. Yep. I, I remember the, the two of one cassette that had the, ex, or the video cassette that had the extended version and the cut down version. Yeah. Yeah, because one had, uh, the, well, the whole, 
Yeah, the whole song, and yeah, they did have a, a cut down version for different things, but. That was a movie. Johnny's got his Johnny gun. Johnny got his and gun. I, and yeah. I, I watched that movie. And I, it is wow. I, I did I as own well. It. <laughs> oh, you own it. I own it. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, I have. Who the DVD. plays Jesus? Is it Donald Sutherland? I think it is Donald Sutherland. Yeah, uh, it's been a minute since I watched it, but it, it's uh, the the song tells the story of a World War One doughboy mm-hmm. who steps on a landmine. Mm-hmm. Ergo, the end of the song, Landmine has taken my sight, taken my speech, taken my hearing, taken my arms, taken my legs, taken my soul, left me with life in hell. So, uh, and there's a, the, the, even if you've never seen the movie, if you've seen the video, you see like the Carnival Barker guy mm-hmm. uh, saying he is the armless, legless wonder of the 20th century. That's the dude's father. Yes. Yeah. That in the movie. Okay. So like, he gets blowed to gets blowed to bits, but he's not fucking dead. No, and his da- his dad takes him on fucking tour mm-hmm. and exploits him, you know, for mm-hmm. to make a buck. Mm-hmm. And like they show in there where he's nodding his head in Morse code, mm-hmm. and he's saying SOS, mm-hmm. kill me, yeah, to the nurse, kill me to the nurse, yeah. But the one thing they didn't show was that basically he he started communicating with a nurse and which he was using a wet sponge on his chest to spell out words so they could talk back and forth. That's right. I do remember that now. You know, and of course, you know, it, it, it it's oh, the way it ends is like just so sad. It's like it, it's unresolved. Everything is unresolved. I mean, yeah. And he's living in a constant dream kind of state. He doesn't know. Doesn't know what's real and what's yeah. fake. Mm-hmm. And and when, when Donald Sutherland's Jesus shows up. Yeah. It's like that. that That's the part because like a lot of it takes place like in the past or you think is in the past. Yeah. There's there's a lot of time jumps. Yeah. A lot of time jumps in the movie. But it's an excellent movie. Yeah. Um, if, if, if Jim, if you actually like watch DVDs that people loaned you, I would loan you the fucking DVD. Yeah, this though, I think the normal version of this I've kind of gotten over over the years. Yeah. However, I have a StarCraft mix, which uses quotes from war movies like Apocalypse Now. Yeah. And all that, which it like intersperses them. And it's so much better with the the war movie stuff. Yeah. And I will. This is (laughs) this is the song that got me kicked off a Napster. Really? Oh. Because I downloaded the StarCraft mix. And because when Metallica went through and was looking for everyone on Napster that had some of their songs, I must have, I had it in a queue and uh, I was booted. And, And Lars said, get him off. He's stealing my money. Well, the best part was all the usernames in that lawsuit my name's probably in that in that whole lawsuit because they had every username that had a Metallica song. Oh, mine's in there too. I, then. I had one, and it was a StarCraft mix that I downloaded. And honestly, you can't buy this version anywhere. Right. It's like it was somebody made it up and uploaded it. Uh-huh. So it's not. I. I mean, I don't know where the legality is, you know. But that that is what it is, and I got thrown off a of Napster for that. Oh my. Motherfucker. <sighs> Now we go to side two of the cassette. Or side three of the album. Yeah. This was packaged as a double album mm-hmm. on vinyl. Um, now we go to a, an amazing song. Yes. The Shortest Straw. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, this, to me, it, it talked about, it, like almost it talked about McCarthyism. Hmm. Okay. You know, uh, and the witch hunts of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the red scare of the 1950s. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yes, All right. I can see that. Yep. Witch hunt riding through the shortest straw has been pulled for you. Right. Yeah, I just figured this. That meant that the choice has been made no matter what you did anyway. Yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah, you get that too. Yeah, no matter what, you're yeah. fucked. No matter, yeah, no matter what, you're screwed. That's you know. that's kind of how the, that's kind of how the McCarthy hearings mm-hmm. went. You know, went at that time too. Yep. Um, next is one of my absolute favorite Metallica songs, "Harvester of Sorrow." Yes. 
every time another great one <clears throat> every time i think of this song i think of that video of them playing in russia yeah in front of that fucking ginormous fucking crowd a million people oh my god a million people on an airfield in japan uh not japan what am i saying uh in russia unfucking believable yeah and these guys and shortest or not short straw harvester of sorrow to this day is one of my absolute favorite metallica tracks uh, this this is just such brilliance and this is about an abusive parent child relationship is the way i always took it okay you know um Pure black looking clear My work is done soon here Try getting back to me Take back what used to be Drink up shoot in Let the beatings begin mm. uh, Distributor of pain Your loss becomes my gain Jesus lord mm. Yeah Yeah And, and I, 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 there's I, I mean obviously With the drink up shoot in Line uh, You know There's a, there's, pro, there's obviously A component Of substance abuse Yeah From the parents too Yeah But I always took this As a uh, as this was a, an abusive, uh, probably father son relationship. Yeah. yeah. Very fucking, very good song. Next, The Freight Ends of Sanity. Yeah, this one's tied for one of my favorites on the album. It's just because yes. just it starts with my favorite cookie Oreo. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God. Yeah, but that actually comes from Wizard of Oz. Correct. Yes. Which is funny because I, I think I saw the Wizard of Oz after I heard this album. Well, which is funny because we got an Oompa Loompa sitting here. Yeah. Whoa. Don't, don't forget. That's, no, wait. Oompa Loompa. That's not from don't. the Wizard of Oz. That's from Charlie and Chocolate You're Factory. still an Oompa Loompa. Okay. Whatever. What the fuck, man? It's a munchkin. Munchkin. A little donut. All right? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. He got a blue blue. Yeah. He's we had welcome you to but it was, Munchkin yes, I, Land. I didn't see Wizard of Oz till. Much later in life because, you know. Really? We didn't watch that kind of stuff in my house. It was on every... They played that, like, every year. It same. wasn't in the Bible, it wasn't in my house. Oh, boy. <laughs> Someone said no. No, Wizard of Oz just... I mean, if it wasn't on HBO or, like, there was no Turner Classic movies or any of that. Yeah. So I didn't see Wizard of Oz till much later when cable kind of exploded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when I heard that... I was kind of like, hey, wait, that's from Metallica. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's from Metallica. <laughs> yes. Right. That's a, I mean, it's, it's, it's a wonderful oh, song. That's awesome. And this song. is about, it's, it's about, uh, you know, coping with mental illness. Mm. Yes. And lose, <laughs> losing your grip on reality. Mm. Excuse me. I've been there a time or two. Mm. I've been there a time or two. Mm. But anyway, uh, hang on. We got some uh, replies here. Oh, really? What do we got? Uh, do, do, do. You haven't been reading them. Well, no, they Jesus weren't popping up. Oh, God. Holy shit. Uh, do, 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 do. Eric says, what's up, boys? I, we're, we're here, Junior. Um, Eric says, er, Junior says he's not sure he would trust you driving a forklift, Jim. I didn't trust myself. I was shitting bricks because it's a brand new forklift. A uh, big one, too. And now Brian said, uh, I'm sorry, this was about an hour ago. Brian said that you went off of space on your printer today and he should have videotaped it. Yes, you should have. That I would I would absolutely throw that up on the YouTube channel. I have to say, you know where Brian sits, Bill? No. At the, at the front counter? Like as soon as you come in. Yeah, he doesn't really sit, though. He just kind of stands there. Well, he's there. But I come out of my office and I didn't realize he was on the phone and I slammed this thing on the floor right there. And I scared the shit out of him. Uh, Peyton says hi. Motley Crue. Woo! Sorry, Peyton. I didn't see it until now. Mm. Motley uh, I, I, we, we love you, Peyton. We love you, Peyton. And no, Junior, you don't care more than I do. Oh, uh, shit. Fuck you, Peyton. What? Junior's not cooler than me for Jesus answering. Christ. Oh, we love you, Peyton. Fuck you, Peyton. That, <laughs> boy, that, that, went, that went quick. Uh no miss and then Peyton says don't hate on my girl Missy Elliott ain't no way now nah, oh she's god no terrible. way uh, wait a minute Peyton likes Missy Elliott apparently yeah apparently uh, and Brian says that's horse shit that's must... like judging a car show if you don't know a water pump from an alternator kind of like Jim what give me a partner in a car I'll give you a base number 
I don't care about a base number. Can you put the fucker on? Hell yeah. No, I doubt it. Knivley pin. Caliper pin? No, Knivley pin. There's no such thing. Uh, uh, Doug, what's up, crackers? Uh, Bill needs a new printer. He can't. He he can't read his writing again. <laughs> Who uh, said that? I don't need a new printer. I just don't print shit out. It's a waste of pepper. Yeah. Don't you have a printer at work? N- not really. I don't. I don't like to do that shit at work. Brian says, "Way to go, Bill. You had to know how to hide your hide your IP address back in the day." Uh, oh yeah. He no, was. didn't have to know how to do that back in the day. There was no hiding IP addresses, man. You just did all. You just did it public, man. <laughs> public. I'm behind seven proxies. I don't want to. <laughs> I know the VPNs. <laughs> I, I'm behind seven proxies. We'll talk about VPNs after this. I got something funny that happened too. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, next we have to live is to die. The instrumental. Well. Yeah, they're token fucking instrumental on every fucking album they gotta do. They didn't uh. have an instrumental on black. They didn't no. have instrumental no, on low reload. Call, call Cthulhu, Orion, and now we have to do another fucking Shh, instrumental. No, you, you forgot about anesthesia. There's there's spoken word. It doesn't matter. It's still an instrumental. I agree. It is. Yeah. I agree. And it's so and it's a bad one too because it starts out with that you know Kirk was like fucking about with that with that with that fucking intro. I wish they had mu- the lyrics to it. It needs lyrics. No, it doesn't. And, and it's got a little a little spoken word entry by that was written by Cliff Burton. Oh, really? Yes. That was written by Cliff. Um when a man lies, he murders some part of his world. These yeah. are the pale deaths which men must call All their, their lives. lives. All this I cannot bear to witness any longer. Cannot the kingdom of salvation take me home? Holy shit. Cliff Burton. All right. I'll give it that it was Cliff Burton, but it's still, I don't like instrumentals. He's a Rickenbacker guy. <sighs> he does have the writing credit on that. Holy fuck. It's not that I didn't believe you. I just looked down. I'm like, son of a bitch. I had figured because he does all, I mean, Cliff does mostly in instrumentals. Yeah. So that was their, you know, the way to put him on the album. Got you. Yeah. And the final track, Dyer's Eve. Yes. This is my favorite song. It's a, such a great song. Um, this is about, uh, I, it's, this is one of James's first dives into his fucked up childhood. Because if you don't know, James Hatfield was raised as a Christian scientist. Mm-hmm. His mother died of a treatable cancer because God will provide. God will heal. This follows a trend. Uh, you know, there, there, are so, there are songs going forward that follow this trend, I should say. Follow the God that failed. God that failed. Yeah. Uh, there's, there, you know, James wrote shit about this. Uh, Mama said. Yes. You oh, know, I love that song. There's a, uh, I mean, this is like James's first time dipping his toe mm-hmm. into that water. And it is just such a fucking angry, visceral song. Do as I say, not as I do. Yep. Um, Dear mother, dear father, what is this hell you have put me through? Believer, deceiver, day in, day out, live my life through. You pushed onto me what's wrong or right, hidden from this thing that they call life. And then he doesn't, doesn't he leave or something like that? Innocence torn from me without your shelter, barred reality, I'm living blindly. This is now... My mom. Then there's I'm in hell without you. Cannot cope without you too. Clip my wings before I've learned to fly. Um, I've wings. outgrown this fucking lullaby. Yes. This is the song that I hope that. that no, no. Look at these lyrics. This is a song about somebody being upset that they left home. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yep. And this is uh, this. I, I. If I had to pick a favorite song on the album. It's a toss-up between this one and Harvester of Song. Yeah, this, this is my this is like the tie that yeah. I had. It's like because I think I think this one somewhat resonated with me a little a little much a little bit. Yeah, so, but like, so it's, I think I just really grabbed onto this one. I yeah. still love to this. Listen to this album was a goddamn pleasure. Oh yeah, this is this is a great record. Um, what's your what what what's your overall rating? Oh, 10. Bill, fuck it, ten. Okay. It's one of Metallica's best albums. I, I agree, but I give it an 8. And the reason I give it an 8 has nothing to do with the songwriting or the performance or any of that. It has to do with the fact that oh. it's too sterile. The production is too sterile. Mm. Okay, Lars's drums sound like boxes. 
There's no life in the drums. The whole album kind of has a dark tone when you when you think about the drums in the album. No, you're, you're it right. Does, no, it doesn't. It there's no darkness to the album. It is too pristine. It is too clean. That's what I mean by well, dark tone. I should say. No, it doesn't have a dark tone. If it had some darkness in the tone, it, instead of being darkness, so, evil darkness, black magic, motherfucker. <laughs> But um, if it if it had some darkness and depth in the in the production, it would have been better. It would have been much better. Yeah. A little bit of dirt. I don't know. I, I I honestly really think for it for what it came out for what was at the time, what was around at that time. What you really, I mean, I think it just. That's why I was never for like all the people said, and justice for Newstead and putting the bass in and all that. The album was perfect as it is. No, it's not. I've listened to the I've listened to the enhanced bass mixes mm-hmm. of the entire album. Mm-hmm. Somebody act that I don't know how they do this, how they are like if they're getting the bed tracks from somewhere, mm. but they enhanced what Newstead played on this record. Well, now if you got the remastered, it, you still can't hear the fucking bass. Yeah, because James, the bass is still buried in the mix. What somebody did was they they accentuated Jason's bass parts, mm-hmm. and it, you can find it on YouTube. Okay, okay? it's called "Injustice for Jason," <laughs> and it's the entire album with enhanced bass tracks. Got you. And it's not somebody playing what they think Newstead was playing. It's actually yeah. Jason's bass pushed up into the mix where it should fucking be. Not Lars saying no. Turn it down. Turn it down. Fucking Danish little asshole. But in, in the, the the production and the production alone is a two point ding for me because you can't hear the bass. Okay? You can't hear Jason's bass. Lars's drums, this is the worst sounding drum sound he's had other than Saint Anger. Really? I like the drums in this album. Terrible. There's no fucking life in those drums. They do not breathe at mm. all. They're dead. Those drums are over compressed. They're over fucking mixed. There's no life in them whatsoever. They sound like cardboard boxes. Hmm. Man, I, I, I like the drums on the album. Drums need to breathe. And they don't breathe here. Kirk's guitar tone is too tightly compressed. James's guitar tone is too tightly compressed. If you hear them live, the live mixes of the songs on this record, even from the Unjustice for All tour, sound better than the mixes on the fucking studio album. Hmm. Because everything is breathing, everything is alive, and you can hear everything. It took a 10 out of 10 album and made it an 8 out of 10, in my opinion. Okay. Musically, it's fucking perfect in a lot of ways this is my favorite metallica album because it's by far their most progressive by far yes it's the most technically you know it's the most technically challenging from a performance standpoint lars actually plays decent fucking drum (laughs) parts on this you know the, the the I mean the little Danish prick still has to follow fucking James. Oh God! But his drum parts aren't fucking terrible on this. But he's still the only guy I've ever heard play in six eight time and come back in on a three. <laughs> <laughs> but somehow it works. Yeah, it works for Metallica. But yeah, like I said, it it could have been a perfect record. Yeah, I think I think this one was a perfect transition, as it were. To the first three, and then what would come after? Eh, I don't know. It, it, it's 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 because it doesn't sound like the first three. No, no, and it doesn't sound like anything after. No, no, it is like it, it is just like this, you know, saying okay now you know and now for something completely different. <laughs> it's yeah, and then they did that for the next album, the two after that. Yeah, and they kept kind of doing that. Unfortunately, I kind of fell off. At Death Magnetic. Yeah. Because then they started saying, we got it now. Yeah. 